excuse go have a great service look forward to hearing about that hallelujah I um we're gonna have a a guest preacher tonight but before I get to that I see somebody in the audience because the Lord was telling me and I, there was a few people that he put on my heart and and I don't see them but I did just spot somebody and I'm gonna put them on the spot and ask if Callie would come up here to share her testimony about what she shared the other morning, ma'am. Come on. Come up here and share share what you shared with the with the group. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on up, honey. Just share. Just come on up. Isaac, come on up. You're not off the hook either, brother. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on, Isaac. This is Isaac and Callie. And, um, yeah, amen. And I, I caught wind of the testimony that, that Callie shared to the, uh, the team Sunday morning. The team that, uh, the greeting team, the guest services team at 930, and they always ask for anything going on, prayer requests, uh, testimony. And so... I'm going to hand the mic to Callie and let her share with all of us what some people have already heard. Hello. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, we had been um, praying um, during the fast just about being faithful um, in our tithe and our offering and just about, you know, the direction of our life and our family. And so I was secretly praying and saying, God, you know, this year, I want us to be like the biggest givers. And normally I take like six months off, 
during the year to stay home with our kids, and then six months I work. But I told God, I said, you know, I am so pumped about what you're pouring into my life. I'm going back to work, you know, next month, and I want to be able to work the whole year so that I can pay tithe and give. And um, so I said, um, well, my husband is just working now, God, just between me and God. And I said, how are we going to pay all of our bills and still be able to give regularly? Well, my, um, our landlord, and then I'm, we're believing God for a home. And our landlord, she came over and she said, Callie, I've been praying and fasting. And I feel like the Lord said, because we had to renew our lease. And usually they go up, plus she's adding on an addition to her property. And she was like, I feel like the Lord said to decrease your rent. <laughs> and I'm just sitting, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I know it's going to at least be between, you know, 25 to at least $70 because she's adding on an addition. And it was so strange. She said, um, I'm going to reduce it by $75, which is my husband's tithe when he gets paid, not for the full month, but, you know, from, from a check per check. And so I said to myself, I'm like, now this is amazing because only God heard, you know, me and him talk about it, but 75, I'm like, now, you know, that's God. So I came to church. My husband was at work. So when he came, when I came home, he was asleep and I said, bae, I got to tell you something. So I told him, he was like, what? He was like, no. And I was like, yes, yes. So, I mean, that was to my opinion, that's God just telling us that um, if we're faithful with the little, that he'll bless us, you know, with just so much more. But at the same time, God is saying, I'm going to blow your mind, you know. So. And um, I just want to uh, thank God for, um, you know, putting it on, um, we're giving Pastor, Pastor Candy's division and, and putting it on her heart about first fruit, giving me the understanding how important the first fruits is, you know, because um, God gave us his first fruit, which was Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? So he's worthy of anything I got in my pocket. It, it, it don't matter, you know what I mean? If I, the bill, bill can wait. I'm going I'm, I'm to pay my tithe, and I, I catch the bill later, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and Pastor Adam. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Amen. There's power in that. And if you were here Sunday, that was... That's the family I was mentioning, that $75, and that's, that's the story right there. And so, you know, on Sunday, if you were here, you heard, you know, Bill and, and Teresa, Bill come up. And these are real people. You can see them. They're real people that have the real struggles that many of you out there are nodding your head about and have gone through. And you can hear this. And God says, test me in this area. By faith, make a move. All right? So it's, it's never going to cease. Seed time and harvest is always going to be here. All right? So um, at this time, I had asked our, our children's pastor, Stephen Price, back in December, we were setting it up, and then he, he couldn't make it. So we, we got tonight. So Stephen Price, our children's pastor that has been here since August, is going to speak to us tonight. And so let's give him a round of applause. Come on up here, Stephen. And I hand it over to you, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So, you know, um, anytime someone gives you the opportunity to talk, you know, I put a lot of value into it. So I'm like, all right, God, what do you want to speak? What is it that you're wanting to share with everyone? What do you want to speak through me, right? And so it's such a big deal. And, like, I don't know, this is just kind of a cool thought that I had, like, even while preparing for this, like, in thinking about it, like, for a month or however long it's been, you know. And I was thinking, you know what, it's so valuable like I put so much value and so much like you know I'm like all right God you got to speak through me it can't just be my words right so I put so much value into it and I'm like man you know what this might be like my only chance to be able to speak to someone here you know and I and I felt like God was like kind of opening up like this thought in my mind of you know what I have those opportunities every day where I have this one chance this only chance to talk to somebody and I'm like, all right, do I place that same kind of value and that same kind of a, hey, God, I need you to be my voice through this kind of a thing. And so we have those opportunities all the time. So every single word we speak, it's something that we get to do. And it, it could be us. It could be the flesh. It could be say, you know what, Holy Spirit, I need you to just speak through me, you know. 
And that's why I'm praying. I've, I've been praying for that for tonight. I'm like, you know what? Even like Iana said earlier, even if I bomb at this, God is still good. You know, right? So it don't matter. So, <laughs> but um, that's just me. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to share with you guys tonight about something just like when we walk into the room, what's different about it when we walk into a place, right? All right. So that's kind of something we're going to talk about. Um, and you'll, you'll probably notice, like, I kind of pick up different things. Like if I listen to sermons or I listen to people and like, or I, when I'm reading through a scripture, I pick up different things. So I'm going to share for something from all these different things. You guys notice how, like, when you're around somebody a lot, you kind of talk like them. Have you guys noticed that? So, um, that's what I, I kind of pick up these little quotes from other people. I'm like, oh, man, that's good stuff. I want to share it with somebody. And so it's like powerful stuff. And we get those opportunities all the time to do that. We just got to do it, right? So when we're around somebody, we talk like them. Maybe we say the same things. They do all this stuff. And so I was, and I, even during worship earlier, I was thinking that. And I felt like God was even kind of sharing with me, like, or like maybe put that thought in my mind again of, you know what? If we spend time around people, we talk like them. If we spend more time, like we spend time around God, we're going to talk like him, right? We share the words that he has and we're going to speak in the, you know, like speak the things that he's speaking. So I was like, all right, I need that. I need to do that, right? So yeah, it's kind of big. So, um, so let's do this. I want you all to pray with me before we get started. Put your hands on your hearts. All right. God, thank you so much for today. You are so good. You are always in a good mood. You love us without end. Father God, I pray that from the overflow of our heart, our mouth speaks. So we pray that you just have all of us, have all of our hearts. Lord God, let us be a catalyst in people's lives to just propel them towards you, Father God, that they will fall in love with you because we are a part of their lives, because we are carriers of your kingdom. We are carriers of your spirit. So Father God, I just pray that you would just empower every single person in this room today. I just pray that you would challenge us, challenge me. Let us just step and walk in the authority that you have for us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So um, at first, I didn't notice, how, I didn't think I would have a podium up here. I was going to like just hold this binder or something. But I've got some, some notes here. So we're going to talk about what it looks like when we walk, like when we show up somewhere and we're around people, what what that would look like as people that carry the Holy Spirit and carry God inside of us. We we're going to talk about what it looked like when God showed up, what it looked like when Jesus showed up into people's lives, what it looks like when the Holy Spirit showed up. And then all of that stuff combined, if, you know, if those things are happening, if God did these things, the Holy Spirit did these things, and we have him inside of our lives, then we can walk in that same kind of power and authority as well. So, so, um, so God showed up. You know, so for it was when the, the Spirit of God hovered over like the you know, the empty and formless earth. It was when his presence came into counter with that and he spoke. That's when creation of the heavens and earth began, right? So there was something about just God's spirit just showing up and his presence being there and the spirit of God hovering over that place that his presence encountered and there's life. He speaks and there's life. So a big thing for us is when when we speak, there's, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongues. We have that power of life that we get that opportunity to speak every single day, right? So he spoke and it came to be in Isaiah 45, 18 says, He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. So, you know, his word it's full of spirit. It's full of life, you know, his word. So a big way for us to start speaking like him is to get his, you know, his word that is full of spirit, full of life inside of us, right? Inside of our heart, because that's what overflows, right? And what we speak. So a big thing that, I don't know, is a big part of my heartbeat is, and is presence, you know? And that's what we're about is like, you know, getting into the presence of God. And they talk about like the manifest presence. And it's not like he's not there because we know omnipresent and God's always there. God's everywhere, right? He's omnipresent. He's, oh wait, omnipresent. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I was thinking all the omnis. All right. Okay. So, so God is omnipresent. He's already there. But maybe it's just something different that when we acknowledge him, there's more of an acknowledgement inside of us that his presence is there, right? And it's just like, hey, you know what? During worship, you guys could feel it. Like we show up and we say, you know what, God? We're going to lay our, our lives down for you. We're going to get offer up to you our worship, right? You got, like we all went through a fast, right? A fast, a big part of it is sacrifice. Fire always falls on sacrifice. So you know what? You guys, 
we give a sacrifice to God. We give a sacrifice of God of our time, of whatever it is that's, you know, something that's valued to us. It's like, might have been what? Fast food for some people. Might have been a certain game. Might have been like media. Might have been whatever it is. But it's a sacrifice saying, you know what? Instead of this, I want more of you, God. And so when we make a sacrifice, fire always falls on sacrifice. And what does that fire look like? It looks like his presence showing up. It looks like depression being cast off people's lives. It looks like addictions that might be happening in people's lives. It doesn't have to be a part of it because it's just something about being in God's presence. It doesn't take someone else just have, having to pray for you for you to be set free of something. It'd just be, hey, you know what? Me and you, God, I can just be in your presence, and I know you've got some freedom for me, right? So that's a big thing. It's not to make little of us praying for people because we get to carry that into people's lives. And we say, hey, you know what? It might be at my hands praying for you. It might be just because someone shares a powerful testimony that it's going to create breakthrough in someone else's life. Man, I love testimony. I love testimony. I feel like anytime I hear a testimony of something that God did in someone's life, my heart is just starts beating faster I don't know, I get teary-eyed. I'm like, oh, man, God, you are so good. You set someone free of drugs. You know what, there's, I don't know, I, I even just claim anybody's testimony. I'm like, you know what, I might not even know the person, but if I hear an awesome testimony of what God did in someone's life, I'm like, hey, I'm claiming that. I, I want to see breakthrough in my friend because they've got this going on, you know? And so it's so powerful, like, even just in sharing the testimony of what God does in our lives, it's another way we give him glory, we give him honor, and you get to share that breakthrough with someone else. Because if we don't share it, they might not get to be able to experience that breakthrough. So, you know, a big thing. So when God showed up, you know, the people in Egypt noticed when God showed up, right? They noticed all the things that happened when they didn't want to let it. Yeah, you know, all the Israelites out. So um, it's, um, man. I'm just excited. So we're going to tie this all together now. So what in every context of this, when we talk about God showing up, when Jesus showed up and encountered people, when the Holy Spirit showed up and how it changed people's lives, we can say, hey, you know what? What does that mean for me? And what does that mean for how I'm walking in my life as well? So when Jesus showed up. Now, when Jesus encountered people, he carried in his being, you know, the way, the truth, and the life, Right? John 5, 19 says, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. So they're one. It's not that they're separate. It's not that God is creating chaos so Jesus would set people free of it. You know, they're one. It's that there's junk going on because of sin. And then it, he is our source. He is the way. He's the truth and the life. He's got the freedom we need for it. Now, um, so in this in exactly doing this, he showed the heart of the Father because he was doing what he saw the Father doing. He's like, hey, this is a picture of what God looks like, and I'm walking out. So we, if any of you guys were here for our play that we got to do, it was really awesome um, with the kids, and it was around Christmas, and it was all about what the life of Christ looked like. And it's kind of a challenge for me because I'm like, all right, God, if you did these things, you know, you met a guy who's blind, and you and you put mud in his eyes, and you touched his eyes, and, and like he might have seen, and it was kind of blurry, you know, and then he touched him again. If Jesus prayed for people twice, if you pray for somebody and they're not healed the first time, it's all right, Jesus healed. Like he prayed for people more than once, you know, and so it's like he models a way that we can say, all right, I'll take courage because Jesus prayed for people more than once. And you can say, hey, you know what, he's the kind of person that, um, there was a guy laying on mad. He like he was paralyzed. And he said, "Hey, get up, take up your mat, and walk." And um, it's just life. He just spoke it. I think about like when we encounter people and we're wanting to carry God's presence into people's lives, or when we're praying for healing and we're asking of God. We kind of shared this with our kids because we were talking about praying for people and just kind of sharing them how like how we can pray for people. And these are some of the steps we talked to them about. We said hey, you know what, if you see someone out on the streets or at school or wherever you are and they've got something going on and you feel like God put in your heart and you want to pray for them, then these are some things you can do. Maybe first you might want to go over to them and say, hey, introduce yourself. My name is so-and-so. It's probably a good idea instead of just coming up to them and be like, hey, I want to pray for you. I don't know. Just be natural. Just be human. Whatever. And then from there, um, it's good to say, hey, I notice your arm is hurt or whatever it is. What's going on? How is it feeling? And 
it's one cool thing, like someone, I don't know where. No, I think I know where. It was that Bethel kids, like they were sharing, like when you pray for somebody, you can take like a scale of one to 10 and say, all right, out of one to 10, how bad is it? Is it a 10, like really bad or, or a seven or whatever it is? And so like if you create a baseline for it, so when you, like, when you go to pray for them, you can ask them again. And, and that way you'd be like, all right, is it better? So that way you can give God thanks because you know a thankful heart always opens up the door for God to do more inside of your life, right? Yeah. And so a big part of it is like, hey, how are you doing? Like, what's going on? Do you mind if I pray for you? And then a big part of what I was sharing with them is when you pray for people, it's not that you have to beg God because it's already in his heart that people would be healed. It's just that you can talk and like, you know, pray it in the authority that he has for us to pray in. Now, this is a challenge for me because I'm not always the person to just come across people when I'm at work or on the streets and just go up to people and pray for people. I need that to change my heart, but it's always like burning in my heart and it's a burning desire inside of me. I'm like, man, I don't want people to deal with junk. I want people to be set free. I want families to be restored. I want people not have to deal with financial issues, whatever it is. And so, but for me, it can't just be a good theology. It has to be a, something I'm practicing, you know, because a, a theology itself isn't going to be the salvation of man. It's got to be the Holy Spirit working through us, as wa- us walking in the, pr- in the Spirit, you know. Now, um, so Jesus, he went, all right, Matthew 4, 23, talks about, and Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Jesus met physical and spiritual needs because, oh, yeah, sorry, I got one of those quotes I was thinking of. So, you know the quotes, um, give a man a fish, eats for a day, and then if you teach a man a fish, he'll be able to eat for a life, but you still want to give a man a fish so he knows what he's going after. You know, so like you still, like, so if someone has a need, you know, you still can meet their need, but then we can also equip them as well and say, hey, you know what? I want to, I want to pray for you. How can we see this through? What does it look like? Who can I partner you up with? And so it's still something that even though we can teach them how to fish, but you still want to give them fish so they can taste and see how good it is to want to go after it even more, right? Now, um, so yeah, okay, that was that quote. That was, I don't know, that was one that was like, hey, that's kind of a cool quote. All right. So um, now when the Holy Spirit showed up, you guys know what happened in Acts when the Holy Spirit showed up, day of Pentecost, you know, up in the upper room. And it's when they started walking in that power and declaring the gospel. How many people were saved that day? How many people were baptized? About 3,000, right? That's pretty big, 3,000 people. It's just people that might not have known anything at all about the Holy Spirit, day one. They just, day one, all right. I don't have to wait until day 20 for me to work up courage or boldness. It's just, all right, if you walk in the Spirit, you don't have to worry about that. Just walk in God's presence. It just happens. And so Joel 28, 32, this is the passage they alluded to in Acts 2. Okay. And afterward, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth. It says blood and fire and billows of smoke. It's big stuff, right? Big stuff. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon will, and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Now, it's pretty big stuff, but it's pretty empowering, though, as well. When you, when you kind of read through and he's like, all right, I'm going to equip you guys. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to, you know, God's always speaking. It's just up to us to listen. He might not speak in a way we normally hear. And we were talking with the kids about different ways that God speaks. He can speak. He definitely speaks to us through his word. Boom. If you don't know, if you want to hear God's voice and you may not hear it audibly, just, there you go. It's right there. Um, So um, he speaks to us in dreams. He's not limited. I always think of this. This is always my one thought. I feel like I'm sharing like all my golden nuggets in one message. I I don't care. I'll do it. It's good stuff. Because again, what if this is my only time I ever get to talk to you? Who knows? So um, I'm just playing. But um, so... If you sleep your regular eight hours out of the night each night, that's a third of your day. That could be a third of your life. God's, 
you know, God wants to be a part of that third of your life as well. So let him talk to you in your dreams. Before you go to bed, say, God, speak to me, prophesy over me, share your word in my life, and then wake up, write it down. All right, what is it? And, and then fall back asleep. I don't know. And then, so God can talk to us in visions. God can speak to us through someone else because if we're carrying the Holy Spirit inside of us and we're speaking, you know, we can speak his word. We can speak his truth to others, right? Now, so the Holy Spirit's pretty big, pretty big. Now, so we talk about, and there's a lot more to it. I've just felt like I shared a few scriptures about what it looked like when God encounters people, when Jesus encountered people's lives, and also when the Holy Spirit showed up. But there's even more to all of those. Like Jesus, he's our resurrection in our life, right? And like, you know, that's what he represents. He's the resurrection of life. He's a newness, like starting a new thing, of course, at the beginning of the year. We all think of what is something new that we want to do. And we we're talking about, like, me and my wife, we're going to have a, we'll have a baby soon. And so that's going to be something new. You know, and that's newness of life. And that's just like, all right, God, you got newness of life for us. And we shared with the kids a week or two ago and said, hey, you want to dedicate this year to God? What is that, what is that something new that you're wanting to happen? And some of them were like, I want a video game. Oh, okay, that's something new, right? But what... We we're like, all right, but what do you want to see God do in your lives? What do you want to see God do in your family's life? Whatever it may be. And there's some pretty cool stuff that y'all's kids want to see God have happen in their lives. It's cool stuff. Just ask them. Be like, hey, what do you want to see God do in your life this year? You know? And then sometimes you have to press through, press through their desires for video games or for more food or something. And be like, but what else? If anything in the world, if God could do anything in your life, what would it be? That's a big question, right? If it could be anything in your life, right? What would that be? So, so yeah, that's good stuff. Um, now, what does it mean for us? Now, Acts 2, 42, 43, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Now, I know it's a big deal, you know, that the world would know us by our love, you know, that we're disciples of Christ by our love, and that we share, you know, that. But it's not just that. We can also walk in the power that God has for us because it's meeting the physical and spiritual needs of people. And those spiritual needs might be, hey, I'm, I've been in a dark place as of late. I know it's not something that's from God. There's some spiritual junk going on that's been attacking me. I need freedom. And I know that freedom. And we, if we have that freedom inside of us, you can just share it with them, man. So we're going to talk about what does it look like when we show up somewhere? What's different about it when we are in a place? Because if we're, you know, we're like meant to be the carriers of Christ, the carriers of his kingdom, we should be the ones that can carry his peace into a situation, the kind of peace that can dispel arguments. And sometimes we can cause arguments, but... At a flip of a switch, we got to know how to keep our love on. This is something me and my wife have been going through this book. It's called Keep Your Love On. There you go. I gave it away. Um, but no matter what, that we're meant to be powerful people. And it's not like that's all about us because it's, if it's all about us, we're going to fail if we don't walk in the Spirit. If we don't walk and saying, you know what, God, each day I need you. I need you more and more. And so it's just us learning like we said, if we spend more time with God, we can learn to talk more of what's on his heart and what, what it is for other people. Now, Moses. Man, I like Moses in the Bible. So, I like, um, I like this one time. Moses, all right. Man, did I put this passage in here? I'm going to find this passage. It is in Exodus. If you guys want to turn along to Exodus, it is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. What if it was in Exodus and I just set it up for that, right? Really? Like, numbers! It's numbers! That was it! One of my favorite verses, right? Uh-huh. There we go. I just remember what verses talk about a lot of times. I don't know if it's part of the entry exam. Where is this passage? I'm glad I remembered it. <laughs> Numbers 12. All right. Man, this is talking about, about Moses. So it just kind of talks about, and this is Old Testament. So if they, huh, 
things in the Old Testament, you know, we're under the new covenant, right? New covenant. So I feel like, you know, when we talk about glory from glory, you know, that God's wanting to take us even higher places. It, I, I heard a pastor talk about this, and I don't remember the exact quote. I just remember he talked about the people in the old covenant sometimes experience more. Like, shouldn't they, the people in the old covenant shouldn't have experienced more power from God than what people under the new covenant. It's not that we should experience less of him. It's a new covenant that it should be even bigger, right? So, and they saw, like, they saw a lot of stuff happen that God did in the old covenant, right? So, and this is Moses who lived in that time. Now, but this is talking about Moses. So when a prophet of the Lord, no, he says, he said, listen to my words. When a prophet of the Lord, okay, sorry, I should tell you, all verse six. There we go. Chapter 12, verse six. Numbers, numbers. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. It's kind of like we were reading in, in Joel. I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. Wait, wait a minute. Man, I wanted him to speak to him in dreams and visions. But it was a little bit deeper. He said, this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face. Clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And so it was, they were, yeah, they were kind of talking about Moses. And God was like, hold up. This is my man. And so that's powerful, right? He, it wasn't just that he's limited to only talking to him in dreams and visions. He's like, you know what? I speak to him face to face. Good night. I've always, that's like a desire. It's like, man, God, I want to speak to you face to face. That's big stuff. If I could handle it, and if I didn't die under the weight of your glory, I don't know. So, um, yeah. But, um, so yeah, that's, I don't know. I just love, I love Moses in that way. Another cool thing about Moses, and it's talking about the value of the presence, and it talks about, like, when we go places, what does it look like? Are we going alone, or are we walking in the Spirit? Moses understood this well, talking about the value of the presence, saying to the Lord, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Because I, I know the verse, we share it about it where it says, you know, they'll know us by our love. But what about this as well? What about how are they going to know if we don't walk, if your presence isn't with us, God? Well, how is it going to set us apart from anyone else that loves people really well? Because we can love people really well. And I desire to love people really well. I need to probably step up my game. I, well, yeah, of course I need to step up my game. I'm human. I'm always failing. And so I need to step up my game and say, all right, God, I need your presence to go with me. I need it. Now, because Paul, he wrote to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4, 20. He said, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. I know it's a big deal, like, about us ministering, whether it's in words and deeds, whatever it is. But you know what? Just like God can talk to us in many ways, we can be the full package for other people, too. And we'll bless them with our service. We'll bless them with our words. We'll bless them by praying for them. We'll bless them just by carrying his presence into places, whatever it is. He explained, he said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Now, a big part of what all this means for us is how do we walk in this? I remember, I think before, like when I was up here before, I might have said, hey, you know what? A big part of us being here together is, it's first off, it's a safe place that... You know, we get to practice walking in the Spirit, and we get to practice praying for people with boldness and courage because it's a safe place. We're not going to, like, immediately turn on someone and say, hey, I'm judging you. Why are you praying for me? Why do you love me so much? Why do you want me healed? Why do you, you know, we're, that's not us. But I don't know, maybe people outside the walls might think that. So it's a part of our practice to take what we're doing here and take it out wherever we go, right? Because it can't just be contained here. We can't hold back God, you know? Um. 
So John 14, 12 says, you know, Jesus was saying, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. So it's, again, their unity. It's one because there's no division in them. And so it's, and we, you know, as a body, we can't have that division between us either, right? So we, we got to be one together because we're all on the same team. You know, we, we can support each other, whether it's here in these walls, we're out the streets, just lift up one another in prayer and encouragement. You know, whatever it is, we're a team together. Now, um, what this looks like, y'all think about, what does it look like? Maybe just take a moment and think, say, hey, God, what does it look like for me to walk with your presence and walk with your spirit into this situation? Whatever it is. So think of your, your work, school, um, home life, whatever it is. Just take a moment. What does that look like? With like a change of heart. Focus on just him, just saying, hey, God, if your presence, if I'm inviting your presence to be here, is that going to change the way I speak? Is that going to change the way I love? Is that going to change the way I walk in authority? Because darkness can't prevail over you, God, so I don't want it to have a place in my home. Now, there's a lot of big stuff that can come with that. Now, I just want to share a couple of cool little things going on, like maybe some testimonies as well. My sister, she... um. She's maybe, she's what, 27 now? Yeah. She's dealt with this stomach pain that's going on for like at least over a decade, maybe 15 years. It's just been so long, like gut-wrenching pain where she'd stay in a room. She can't go anywhere. She'd be stuck on the bathroom floor and just, it would be so horrible. And then she goes from one doctor to the next and they can't diagnose what it is. They're putting her on all these medications. They're on all this junk. And then just within this past half a year, there was finally some breakthrough, partially because they went to another doctor, partially because they're finding out certain medication was really horrible to her digestive system, and, and she's already doing better. It's a praise God all the way. It's, goodness, she's able to eat whatever she wants now. She can go places. She couldn't do that. She would eat sushi for like half of a year because anything else would tear up her stomach. It was just crazy, and nobody knew what was going on, and I prayed I was back in Master's Commission, a ministry program over in Birmingham, like 2005. I remember just praying and just fasting and just on my face before God saying, God, just heal my sister. I love her so much. I don't want her to go through junk and continue just pressing in and pressing in. And goodness, we're seeing freedom in her life. And it, she's able to go do stuff. She's able to go out in public and all this stuff. And it's a big thing. And so it's a freedom that God brought into her life. And now, mind you, she still has some stuff that God still can bring freedom to her in her life. But you know what? I can't focus just on that. I can't say, hey, you know what? You're not all the way well. You still got this other stuff that's got to be fixed. It's we thank God in those things. And he's in a thankful heart. He's going to do even more inside of people's lives, right? Man, another cool thing. We were, um, when we were in Thompson, Georgia, the church we came from, we went out on outreach. We just went into Walmart, went into... I went to Bilo. We'd just go places and we would go and like we would worship beforehand and pray and say, all right, God, what are you speaking? Who do you want us to pray for? What does it look like? What's going on in people's lives? Show us something, whether it's a vision, give me a word, whatever it is, I'll keep an eye out for it. I want people to encounter you, God. What is it going to be? And we, and we met, and I remember our two of our kids, Parker and Chandler, they were both in what, elementary and sixth grader? And um, we were, they prayed for this lady. She had a back brace, and so they're like, okay, I, I want to pray for her. And they prayed for her right outside of Walmart, and they saw her like a week or two later, and she's doing great. She doesn't have all that junk going on in her back anymore. And it's just like, oh, yeah, man, that's our God, right? And so it's just so cool. I remember we, like, we prayed for Tabitha. She gets these sinus headaches all the time, and we were at Bethel, um, at the end, like mid, it was July, whatever. It was July. And so we were up there and they were praying and we we're like, hey, what's going on? And we were like, eh, nothing normal. Cause I mean, nothing much. And like, we we're trying to think of what to even pray for because we're kind of healthy people and healthiness alone is already a blessing. But you know that, um, she was like, all right, I want to pray for my sinuses. And then like, it was odd, like right in the praying for it, like things just cleared up. She's like, oh, I can breathe. Oh man, this is amazing. It's so powerful, right? So it's just all these little things. It's not small because God cares about the little things. It's not just about praying for people, for them to be healed. If they're healed by going to a doctor, the whole point is for people to be well. That's in God's desire for people's lives. Whole point is for freedom to be in people's lives. Because, you know, that, that word sozo in the Greek, it talks about, saved, healed, and delivered. It's not just the salvation because even if heaven alone was all we had, 
to go forward. Oh man, that's amazing. But you know what? He also has deliverance for us. He also has healing for us. He's got so much for us. And that's something we can carry inside of us. I need you guys to challenge me to do that. So if y'all see me, I'll be like, hey, Stephen, are you walking in this stuff? You need to be walking in it. You can't be bold here and not be bold at work. You can't be bold just here. And so I need y'all to challenge me and challenge, challenge someone next to you. Find somebody. All right. Um, but yeah, the whole thing was, I think the message, so the message was when you walk into the room. I, I probably gave that title because I really like this song that says, when you walk into the room, and it talks about what does it look like when God shows up in a place. The, um, let me just read two little verses from this song because I love it. It says, when you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring, right? And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet, Jesus, and to worship you. When you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. And, you, and when you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise because there is, des- there is resurrection life in all that you do. Now, and we share with the kids, we say, hey, you know what? Two kingdoms, right? What's in those two kingdoms? All right, there's kingdom of heaven, kingdom of darkness. Are you finding these certain things in the kingdom of heaven? Do you see that there's sickness, animosity, depression, sadness, anger, hate? Are those all part of the kingdom of heaven? We can't, I I wouldn't want it to be. I I don't want that to be there, right? So when Jesus said, hey, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, I, I feel like he wants us to have that freedom of, hey, you know what? There's not sickness there. You don't have to be walking in it here. You don't have to be walking in that depression. You know, God's got that freedom. He, the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And someone, my, my buddy Chris, he said, and that's not just a good saying. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not just a good saying. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it. How does it change when you walk somewhere? Is your, does the peace that's inside of you change a situation? Does his power go with you? Are you asking God, hey, speak to me? Are you giving me words? Are you prophesying over someone, something? What do you want me to share? Do you have breakthrough for somebody? Whatever it is, God. And and then just take the boldness and do it. All right. Like we said, what, that chicken line, right? So um, where is it at? Is this my chicken line that I need to get off of that, right? Um, get past it. So... I don't know. I just really want you guys to be encouraged. I want you guys to be empowered to just to know that you've got a good God. He is just so good. He is so in love with you. And he's got good things for you, right? He's got tons of good things for you. So we are doing one of my favorite things. We are opening up for every single person in this room to come up here for prayer. Whether that is for if you have junk going on in your life and you say, hey, you know what, God? You're the one who saves. You're the one that cleans. You're the one that makes all things new and you need it. Come on up here. We're going to have the ministry team up here. If you need to just soak in his presence, then just soak in his presence, right? If you need some courage and you are like, you know what? I want someone to pray for me to have courage and boldness to walk in this and to have that confidence in my God, my King. Because God's going to give you words. It doesn't all fall on just one certain way to minister to people. You can just share a testimony with somebody and it, something will light up and out of someone's life and they're like, oh man, I'm hungry for that. Whatever it is, you can share just love, whatever it is. So I'm going to pray to... I'm going to pray to open up for prayer. There you go, right? And if you guys need prayer for anything, if you're like, you know what? This this God that we're talking about, I want to have that relationship with him. So it's not just about going to heaven, but I want to walk in that power and walk in that authority to bring that kind of freedom to other people's lives. Come on up. We can pray for you for that too. If you got pain in your body, if you have sickness, whatever it is, if you want to walk in authority, we... We're a family. We're going to pray for you guys. So God, thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you're a God that you not only set the earth in motion, but you care about 
our desires, our heart, our lives, our family, our friends. You are good. Nothing is impossible with you. And so we're going to press into just the miraculous part of you because that's just who you naturally are. Everything is big with you because you're so amazing. So God, I just pray that you'll give courage. Pray that you'll bring freedom. I pray that you would just bring a new spark of life inside of us, Father God. I pray that we would just give sacrifice so that we, you, we can see you work and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen.